Hello, welcome back. I'm Gerard, and today we're gonna talk about we're gonna have a little discussion on food. Hell yeah, more about the culture, but not about the food we try. But anyway, let's get into it. If you're new to this channel, we make travel videos sharing our discovery on the road just to inspire you to travel more. Travel now. If that sounds fun to you, please subscribe so that you see more videos like this in the future. I have spent the last four days in Hanoi, and the food here. The food here, I just love him. I love him so so much. I come from Malaysia, they say Malaysia have great food. But then I... I love the food here. Maybe it's my first impression, but I... Still, I find a lot of similarities between like Malaysian food and Vietnamese food. For example, if you look at like one of their most famous dishes, like Pho Ga. Come on, it's just basically Kai Si Ho Fen, like Ji Si Ho Fen, chicken kui tiao soup from Ipoh, my hometown. With just a little more coriander, green onion, and a little bit of fish sauce in it, but you get what I mean. And that food just became Vietnamese. Like seriously, that's like their signature. Alright, enough with the nonsense, let's get into the food culture. What I find unique about the food culture here, number one, and that is the food is seldom hot here in Hanoi. That's weird. They do come hot, but after you wrapped everything in cold stuff like raw vegetables and then dip it into a fish sauce which is also cold, then everything is just not hot anymore. Number two, something that might have caused number one, and that is they always, almost always serve everything with raw vegetables and a bowl of sauce, which most often are made out of fish sauce. That just makes everything Vietnamese. They do it with a lot of different dishes. And number three is they don't consume a lot of meat. And I'm not saying, for example, they don't eat meat each meal. I'm saying like the portion of meat in each meal is relatively small. Let's get on to number four. It's not just their meat, their portion overall is small as well. For the past four days in Hanoi, we are seldom full. Like, we eat non-stop, but we are seldom full. That's because, like, first, there's not a lot of meat. Secondly, it's all just vegetables. Number five, they drink a lot of juice and they taste very good. You see street food, you see coffee. This is Hanoi, a lot of coffee. And you see fruit juice, like, they are everywhere. Even more so in the evening, when the sun goes down and coffee falls out of favor and then just everybody just go for fruit juice. And what other snacks do they go with that juice? And that's what's coming in the next one. Number six. Is it six now? When they drink juice, they eat a lot of sunflower seeds. At least that's what they do in like when they're having supper. I don't know whether it's because of its culture or whether it's affordable, but they do consume a lot. And I mean a lot of sunflower seeds here. And the final one is they don't use artificial flavoring that much here. And that is a very good thing because we eat out a lot. We eat out every single meal here. Unlike China and Malaysia nowadays, it feels like, especially China, they, they use so much artificial flavoring or MSG, or we like to call it Ajinomoto, which is like a, a brand, a Japanese brand of seasoning. I guess that has something to do with us just eating home cooked food in China and Malaysia, that's why like we seldom eat outside. Down here in Vietnam, is it down or up? Down here, like in Vietnam, a lot of locals eat out every single day, so feels good for us, like, I feel like I can still stay healthy while eating out. Okay, now that I've got that out of the way, um, I would like to share with you guys like how I look for food, or, like hunt for food. So what kind of food do I look for? I like authentic experiences, I like authentic food. Instead of those like commercialized shops catering towards, uh, you know, tourists, I would like to have like proper street food where the locals have their food. This is because when you go for those kind of proper street food, you get the authentic taste. Whereas if you go to those commercialized shops where they cater towards tourists, they're catering towards an international market. Some of them can't actually take, you know, fish sauce. They have to like dilute it or something. You lose the authentic taste. That's what I'm trying to say. So how do I look for authentic food? So before I go out and hunt for food, instead of TripAdvisor or other apps that recommend you to restaurants, I try to look for food instead on blogs so that I get like a awake sense of what the local food in that area is and then I just would try my best to remember the names of those food and then I go out and look for that that food like literally just like oh, for example again Puncha or Foga and I just go out and like oh there's a Puncha there just, just, let's just go there that, that place yeah something like that that might sound a tad bit too complicated 
but you kind of get a hang of it after you do it like a couple of times. So when you're finally out and about, what are the factors that I look out for when I hunt for food? Number one, does the place look like a Starbucks or a McDonald's? What I'm trying to say is, does it look commercialized like that instead of that? Number two, if it's not, are there any other languages besides Vietnamese? Maybe English, maybe Chinese, because if they are, they're most, most probably gonna be like catering to tourists as well. Number three, are there anyone dining in there? That's very obvious, I don't need to tell you that. So let's get to number four, which is if they are, are those tourists? I don't have any other ways to like uh, define tourists right now besides uh, seeing people not from this region. That's how I tell whether there are tourists in there. So with these few factors in place, we can kinda up our chances of looking for authentic street food. I'm quite sure you notice when I say up our chances because there are still a lot of times where we fail to find that authentic freaking street food. There are a few reasons to why we fail sometimes. For example, we are super hungry and we just don't care. That's like the main reason. Or number two, um, we forgot one of the factors, or more than one. Or number three, maybe TripAdvisor strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that place. Ah, while we are at the topic of TripAdvisor, I do have to mention this. After using the app for a bit, I found that TripAdvisor reviews are mostly from people um, from the West. So because of like the different of food culture or just culture in from like, between the West and the East. They have the tendency to find everything interesting here. So a lot of times when I when, when I see the reviews of restaurants or food or things to do in TripAdvisor, I ended up finding myself in restaurants with not the most authentic food. And also, just because they say it's affordable, it sometimes doesn't mean it's actually affordable for us Asians. But then, if you guys are interested in finding out the food that I tried in Hanoi, I've made a video about that and I will link it somewhere. Yeah. So the conclusion is, I, I find it a little surprising like for me because I did not use Google Translate as much as I expected myself to. I literally just point and say, I want one, move. That's it. There are some times that I feel like even though I'm dining at the same place as the locals, I'm, I'm missing out because they, they got all those cool dishes which I don't know how to order. For example, for a guy, you can actually, you can actually order the gar, which is the chicken by itself and then well, like separately, just like, just like I see of a Gui Tiao Chicken, Tauke Ayam, back in Ipoh, but I don't know how to. In some ways, I really wish I have a translator or friend around me so that I can order those super awesome cool dishes that I never succeeded to order because language barrier. But then again, these are just part of the adventures of traveling, so yeah. Anyway, I've only been here for a few days. And I was still going to be traveling for a bit, and these are like my initial impressions of food of Hanoi. Um, if you guys find this video helpful, give us a like, it matters a lot. And if you want more videos like this in the future, please subscribe, it's right down there. It's like the big gigantic red button of subscribe, and hit the bell button as well, because you want to get notified when we put out new videos like this. More Vietnamese series. And as always, I'm Gerard, and it's nice talking to you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Tchau!